So we're here again at the National Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham, just setting up for tomorrow's auction. Uh, things start at 11 o'clock tomorrow for the scooters and one o'clock for the motorbikes. Most of the stock has arrived. We've had a good couple of days getting bikes in. So we're down to the last 20 or 30 that need to arrive. This particular bike here is probably going to be one of the highlights of the auction. It's a 1949 HRD Black Shadow. Most of the Black Shadows are known as Vincent Black Shadows. 41 of these were made under the HRD name until they decided to concentrate on the Vincent name. They were having a push in America at the time and there was confusion between Harley Davidson and HRD. So it was decided to standardize, just call it Vincent, not Vincent HRD. Uh, verified by the club, uh, matching numbers, bike. Larger capacity petrol tank apart from that, pretty well in standard condition. All the classic black shadow features, the black engine of course, the big speedometer, uh, bigger brakes, uh, ventilated brakes I should say. So yeah, this should go down very well and always popular. The black shadow is still one of the most desirable classic bikes around. So another highlight of the auction will be this uh, BSA Hurricane. Now straight away people are going to think surely that should be a triumph. It appears when they first started developing the model with Craig Vetter in America, initially it was a BSA. Uh, only one was made, this is the prototype. By the time they actually developed the bike and put it into production, it then became the Triumph Hurricane that everybody knows about. So a very rare, very collectible bike uh, with a good history. And the uh, various people who've worked for the Triumph BSA group in the past remember the bike and have verified its authenticity. So just for a bit of contrast to the BSA uh, triple that we just looked at, by the time it got into production, it did become the Triumph Hurricane. So this is an example of one of the Triumph badged up versions. Much the same bike, the pre-production one had obviously handmade differences. Uh, this is a bike, again, that's been stood for a while. We'll want some recommissioning, but still a very rare, very collectible bike. This starts the line of maybe 20 odd Triumphs that we've got. Uh, just a little Triumph 21 here, 350. Uh, new and old stuff, uh, a nice uh, modern triple there. And again, next to it, a modern twin cylinder Triumph. So we've got Triumphs through the ages, working their way down the line here. Uh, this one, for instance, is a Triumph police bike. So I think that would have been called the Saint. They did very well selling bikes to the police in the 60s and 70s, did Triumph. Uh, this one supposedly had been part of a Royal Protection Programme in its day, so doesn't look like it's ever done a great deal next to it a little 200 cc that would be a learner bike in its day so a lot of people would have started motorcycling on a bike like that we then go along with lots of twins through the ages triumph were probably famous for the twin cylinders something like this especially uh, that's an early speed twin maybe 1950ish i guess out we have in teleforks and that's the classic triumph layout twin cylinder parallel twin and became, like I said, their sort of uh, trademark. This one, uh, having said they made twin cylinders, obviously they then went on to the triple, so like the hurricanes down there, this is the three cylinder. So we've got a few versions of this again through the ages. Uh, different tanks and different layouts just dictate which is which. Uh, another couple of interesting ones here. It's a 250, uh, but that would have probably gone down well in America. Trailblazer it's called that one. So 250 single cylinder engine, but with more of a trail bike layout. This one here, Tiger Trail. Again, very few of these about. I think there's probably only a couple of hundred of these were made. Twin cylinder engine, but in more of an Enduro or almost Paris Dakar style uh, layout. So down the right hand side of the room, it's essentially Triumphs. Left hand side of the room, mainly BSAs, other assorted British ones, Norton, uh, Royal Enfield, uh, AJS at the end there. Ariel, this one, Ariel Leader. In the early 60s, Ariel, part of the BSA group, went down this route of fully enclosed bikes. So you bought a bike here with more carrying space, full weather protection, two stroke, twin cylinder engine. So again, unusual for the British to be doing that. They were essentially four stroke singles and twins. Lasted for a few years, but eventually the Japanese domination took over and Ariel faded away probably in the mid 60s. Nice original bike here, has all the extras like the panniers and the screen. So a nice simple recommissioning job for somebody to end up with something a bit more unusual. Uh, next to it, Triton, again, always popular, Triumph Norton combination. It's the classic cafe racer is that. It's got the best of both worlds, the Triumph engine with the Norton frame. Big petrol tank, small seat, nice traditional layout. Uh, 
that's the Norton Dominator, so that would have been maybe that bike, still with a Norton engine in it. That one's been stood in somebody's dining room for years, so it wants a good recommissioning, but it's essentially all there and nice and original. A few more Nortons along the line here. Uh, then we move to the BSAs. This one here, uh, where we said we had the Triumph Trident, the three-cylinder, there were also the BSA version. So again, same three-cylinder engine. That's an early one still with drum brakes on it. And the two ran side-by-side -side BSA and Triumph, almost in competition with each other. But underneath it all, essentially the same bike. Uh, again, twin cylinders here, two very similar ones here, later 650 unit construction twins. Uh, end of the line here, the classic BSA Gold Star. Really, you know, that would be the uh, sort of cafe racer, rockers dream bike in the 60s. 500 single, but very high performance. Not the easiest bike to ride and live with, but really an iconic bike from the 1960s. So this is the room where we have the docks office and the bidder's reg and payment desk and everything. But essentially this is full of pre-war bikes. Roughly everything that has Gerdy Forks we've put in this room. Like this Triumph here, single cylinder Triumph. Pre-war stuff, perhaps a bit more variety if you start looking carefully. Side valve, overhead valve engines, single cylinder, twin cylinder. There's a Douglas somewhere behind here. I've just noticed with the four and a half twin cylinder engine. So a very interesting room to look at. Some of these bikes are 100 years old as well, so there's some real history in here. Uh, something like the BSA there, reputedly used in the 1913 TT. So 110 years ago, that would have been a TT bike, believe it or not. Uh, another one here, this is a Sunbeam. A name you don't see now, obviously. It did survive quite a while into the 50s, probably. But uh, in its day, that would have been very much as good as it got. This Douglas then, interesting bike, very unusual engine configuration for motorbikes in that cylinders point forwards and backwards. They normally point up, sometimes out either side, sometimes in a V, but this is a four and a half design. Something that didn't really catch on. Uh, very few manufacturers probably copied that design. So it makes it a very standout, unusual bike. Now we have the off-road corner, mainly trials bikes. Through the ages again, uh, if you look at the AGS, the Norton and uh, Royal Enfield there, these were built by the factories in the 50s and 60s as competition trials bikes. Very heavy bikes, 500cc, single cylinder engine, so plenty of weight. You can see the development as you get into the dot and the greaves. They'd now started to put in essentially Villiers lightweight two-stroke engines in. So far lighter, simpler bikes to uh, compete on, simply to maintain and sort of enough power to get through with the trials and the scrambles. I think one of them here is a Greaves Auckstone Scrambles bike. Greaves always distinctive with the leading link front fork. So there's a Greaves Auckstone, like I said, and a Greaves Scottish Trials bike in this corner. Velocet corner now, and unusually with a lot of Velocets. Normally it's gold stars that we're inundated with, but this time various Velocets, essentially 350 and 500 singles. Right across the board, Vipers, uh, Thruxtons, Venoms, some modified, some Clubmans. Funnily enough, these all came from the same area, three different vendors, but essentially they all came from somewhere up in Cumbria. So in the day, Velocets must have sold very well up in uh, the Lake District. The odd one out, I suppose, is the LE one here. This is, again, a bit like the Aerial that we looked at before. Fully enclosed, a brave attempt to move motorcycling on and give people more weather protection, some carrying capacity. Didn't really catch on. Uh, the scooters did that job so much better. Famous as a noddy bike, this. The police used it uh, for out on patrol. So generally it became known as a noddy bike. And even in cartoons, you still see examples of this bike being used. The German section now. So a couple of NSUs, uh, single cylinder 250s. I think they both are. Obviously BMW, classic German bike, R50 flat twin there, R25 single. A couple of MZs, East German bikes. The rare interesting ones are like this one, RX 400cc. Name that people have heard of, very few people will have seen a bike like that in this country. Part of a man's private collection in uh, Liverpool, who built up a collection of German bikes right from the 60s onwards, unusually. All need recommissioning, but essentially most of these bikes are being offered at Royal Reserve. Probably the rarest one is the Victoria. Again, it's a name that people may have heard about, but very few will have seen. Uh, we've had one uh, potential buyer ring up and he thinks there's only three others in the country. So a very rare name. Late, 50, uh, late 30s actually. 
Uh, it has got an N registration plate on because it came into this country in 1974, but actually made in Germany just before the Second World War. Uh, comes with various instruction books and uh, what looks to be a logbook in German, so quite an interesting history behind that one. Uh, the Italian section now, uh, obviously we always have plenty of Ducatis, various ones from a 996, a Paso, a few Supersport 750, uh, 900s. A couple of unusual Italian bikes, again you don't see in this country that much. The Benelli there, a uh, very rare bike, it was uh, part of the tie-up with Benelli and Motobi, so the engine's more like the classic horizontal Motobi engine. Probably never brought into this country officially. That was restored recently in Italy and then brought over uh, fully registered, comes with the V5C. So this is a Moto Guzzi. People will be surprised to see the Moto Guzzi name on a bike like this. Famous for big capacity V-twins. This is actually a 125 single cylinder two stroke, much like the Japanese bikes of the 70s when the trials bike boom started. Uh, the Italians joined in. By this stage, Benelli and Moto Guzzi were joined together. So it would have been a bike that was sold under both names. Like the Benelli before it, this has been restored in Italy, recently brought into this country possibly not another one like it in the country. We then go through more unusual Italian bikes, Ducati Passo over there, some 750 and 900 Supersports. Another rare Italian bike, a Fantic Ti. Like the other two I just mentioned, restored in Italy, recently brought in. A lot of people would have started the motorcycle in the 1970s on bikes like this. In the days when 16 year olds could only drive mopeds. Uh, the Italian stuff were quite desirable, didn't sell as well as the Japanese bikes, but obviously still a rare collectible bike in this country. We're in the foyer now, so these are the first bikes you'll see when you arrive. Essentially a race bike collection. Three uh, single cylinder British bikes, really these would have been the state of the art in the 1950s and the uh, mainstay of bike racing, right up to TT and Grand Prix winning. Uh, bikes through the ages, the Yamaha, the early 80s, that was raced by Bob Jackson, uh, had some good results, supposedly the bike that he won the Northwest 200 on and had a good results in the TT and other road races. As a contrast from the same collection, we've got a 1930s Vela set. That's been fully restored to a really good standard and again, typical of what race bikes would have been like in the 30s and 40s. Just down this line here, uh, interesting bike, a Norton 650SS. Uh, bought by the vendor when it was maybe only two years old. He's raced the bike, he's had it on the road, he's put it back into classic racing, so he's a lot of history with this bike. Uh, Gold Star based race bike. Uh, finally, a project here. Uh, this is a Benelli, will become a Benelli race bike replica. Comes with engine parts and everything, does that one. So a Japanese section now, like you find in all the recent auctions, this is becoming increasingly popular. We're now at the point where we've probably got as many Japanese bikes as we have British bikes. Obviously Japanese bikes, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki essentially. If you look at this one here, this is a 1972 GT750. Obviously a very vivid colour scheme. Back in the 70s paint jobs were very much in your face. Famous candy lavender paint scheme on this, or some people call it pink. Three cylinder water cool triple. Fully restored at great expense. So ID 350LC, really going to become one of the most collectible bikes from that era. It's the sort of bike a lot of people owned and if they didn't own one, they actually wanted one. Nice condition, this one fully restored. It's got all the right bits, the standard exhaust and all the right bits of colour scheme on it. So still a bike you can ride, a very rideable bike, still performs quite well. The auctions tomorrow then, Wednesday the 12th of July at the National Motorcycle Museum, Solil near the NEC. The doors open at 9 o'clock for viewing, the scooter section will start at 11 o'clock. Uh, they'll probably last for the first hour, then we'll have a brief rest and then the motorcycle section will start at 1 and run through the afternoon. With 40 odd scooters and nearly 200 motorbikes to get through, so it'll be a full day of a job. So three ways of bidding in the auction. Uh, the best way obviously is to come and view the bikes and join in and bid live in person. If you can't make it to the auction, you can always bid online or you can ring up and book a telephone bid. More details available on www.hnh.co.uk. So we hope lots of you can join us tomorrow and come and enjoy the auction. <laughs>